Hey everyone, this is Achuta Baba from Nightlight Astrology, and today I'm hanging out with my friend Kat from The Creative Introvert. Uh, check her podcast out at thecreativeintrovert.com. Kat aggregates questions that all of you put into the chat boxes and um, live streams that I do, and then we create these little interviews. And she's with me today. We're making a bunch of these and doing a lot of them while I'm moving because I don't have time to do a lot more right now. So you're going to get real sick of Kat and I. But um, in the meantime, thank you for being here, Kat. Yeah, you're welcome. So the topic that I kind of can't resist bringing up um, is around the daimon. This is something that I've been really looking into a lot recently. And this came from just a kind of follow-up conversation that we were having about karma and uh, I guess how we might be guided towards maybe the best decisions. And my kind of theory is, well, not my theory, but what I'm theory that I'm really drawn to is this idea that there's a daimon that we, you know, if you've come across the myth of uh, that we have selected before we incarnated into these bodies and that it's kind of keep leading us either, you know, towards, um, towards our life purpose, like what we should be doing, which I'm arguing is a spiritual thing. So what, what is your understanding of the daimon and, you know, what place it has potentially spiritually? Yeah, this is an important concept, right? And it comes from, you know, Greek philosophy, Greek theology, so to speak. Um, and it was a part of early astrology for sure, um, because it's a, the word daimon is used in a huge number of texts and circumstances and passages and stuff like that in ancient astrology in the West and kind of Greco-Roman astrology. So the daimon would be, yeah, like a soul guide, like a spirit guide, um, that the spirit guide comes with the soul into its birth. This comes through the myth of Ur, which is in Plato. Um, and I think was is in some ways paradigmatic for the way astrologers now think about the daimon in ancient astrology, which may be problematic because the myth of Ur is not the, it doesn't have the market cornered on what the daimon meant or what, it, how, why it might've been relevant to ancient astrologers just as a side, as an aside. But um, the, um, the basic thing would be the soul chooses a lifetime. The daimon comes in to kind of like the currents on a river, keeping the boat moving toward that destination um, and uh, kind of guiding it along. Um, Cause we have free will, but we have to also stick to a path we've chosen in some way uh, that's concurrent with, I mean, it, it coincides pretty closely with the view of karma in the East, which is that, you know, we're, we're bound to, um, certain kind of fate. And the daimon played a role in the, um, you know, in the guarantee of the, the larger paradigm of fate that ancient astrologers used as well. So that's a big, juicy conversation. I would recommend, by the way, if anyone's really interested in diving into all of this at a much deeper level to read Dorian Greenbaum's book, uh, The Daimon and Hellenistic Astrology, which I think you can find a free PDF of online. Um, but, you know, if you want to really dive deeply into this, but that's the gist of what the daimon is so okay so let's go back to your questions again just so i can remember what they were so i guess what i'm thinking is that the daimon is important because for me it's it's guiding us towards the life that we almost require in order to like wake up spiritually and figure out who we really are and okay. go back home let's right. say okay so the, and this is the problematic part of that is that um it's the in order to awaken and, you know, sort of go back home spiritually that the daimon leads us on the path that we've chosen. Um, yes. And I want to say yes and no. And the, I want to say, get, get, understand the, the, explain the no part first. Um, the soul chooses whatever it chooses based on its desires. Um, it, so it's, you could say, even from the myth of earth standpoint, like we're, we're here to experience what we experience um, because it's what we've chosen. Um, but what we have chosen, although it's facilitated and allowed by this universe and, all, and it's filled with lessons that we learn, um, is not guaranteed to wake us up. Uh, the only thing that wakes us up is the exercise of our, of our free will to, to wake up. So um, I, I, there is no, um, it's not like we're, we're each being, uh, guaranteed a walk home um, that that we have to choose it is really really important and the daimon doesn't choose it for us the daimon doesn't make sure that it happens the daimon just makes sure that the life we've chosen 
happens. We're the ones who decide whether the life we've chosen and the diamonds helped us to live that we that we receive the fruits and the insights and the lessons. That's still up to us. It's just like you could have someone um, guide you through a 21 day diet and really give you a lot of good insight about the diet and, 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 and your body and stuff like that. It's still up to you whether or not you're going to receive those lessons or not. Right. So that's the way I think of it. I'm just wondering about where we get the, that inspiration in the first place. Like you're saying it's free will that makes us, you know, pick the virtuous apple over the cupcake. This is, you know, um, but for me, the reason I pick the apple, let's say, is, um, is because of the things that happened to me before that, which, you know, if I've been following my diamond, it's going to be a smoother route to the apple. So I'm just kind of wondering where that inspiration comes from if it's not from life events, karma itself. Okay, can you rephrase the question for me one more time? So you're kind of saying that the thing that um, gets us on the, like, the spiritual path is our free will. Is that mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So on any path, on any path, whether it's a material path or a spiritual path, it's our uh, choice. Yeah. Um, but you know, why somebody picks one path over the other for me is, um, what happens to it, like what it comes across and those things happen, even though they're just like, you know, you originally picked to, okay, astrology. I originally picked astrology because I selfishly wanted to learn more about myself, you know, and then but I, I couldn't have known uh, that I might find your work, for example, you know, we've talked mm-hmm. about this before. Could it not be that the diamond was actually the thing that was guiding me in the first place towards astrology? Or maybe the diamond didn't even care where I ended up. It was just like, I think Kat, Kat agreed to do astrology. Right. So what I'm trying to say is it's like, it's the karmic fruit that, that is leading us to a spiritual path. It can also lead us to another path, but Yeah. So that's, you know, again, there's going to be a slight difference there. Um, It's, this is like real subtle philosophical territory. (laughs) So people are out there like rolling their eyes, like clicking away. Um, But yeah. So um, the things that you came across previously were also result of previous choices. This is without origin. That's why we use that word anadi with the karma, right? So you can't trace it back to something original that, that, happen to you from outside in the past. The, this, all events that we encounter are generated, like um, even though the external world is, is real, it's not just a projection of me, but still the things that we encounter by providence are specifically because of our choices, intentions, and desires. So the feedback that we get in the mirror of the world and people and things around us come back because of what we've chosen now um it's on on certain level what the the daimon is all about is the idea that we are held to what we are chosen and that um it's sort of like okay i'll give you a simple a simple analogy in an ayahuasca ceremony right people will drink this very powerful cup of psychedelic medicine from the rainforest and before they do so they'll often ask for a vision or a healing or an insight of some kind, right? And then they drink the potion, very similar to the myth of Ur, by the way, right? So what happens during those ceremonies while the akaros are being uh, sung and the shakapa rattles are being shaken is that you go into this very deep trance. You go on a journey, sometimes people will say. And that journey eventually in the most unpredictable, wild, interesting, beautiful ways will lead you to the intention that you set or the prayer that you uh, asked or whatever. Sometimes what we come to realize is that what we asked for was deeply selfish. You know what I mean? And so where we're led is really scary and freaky. Other times what we learn is that we had a really pure intention and sometimes you know it it, we feel very blessed and it's very beautiful experience like blah 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 so there's all different kinds of experiences that you can have based on the kind of prayer that you say before you go for a ride 
you know. And sometimes, regardless of of what people pray or the intention they set, some people don't in- set intentions or anything. But this is a very common experience that people have. So, along the way, what is it that's guiding us toward those experiences? It's the shakapa. It's the leaf rattle going, and it's the songs being sung. And then oftentimes it's these spirit guides in the form of animals, all sorts of totems that come in, and they somehow keep you and push the experience into your intention, right? But the thing is, is that I've seen this, you know, hundreds of times, people are guided into their intentions only to run screaming in the other direction, right? Or they're guided in their, into their intention and they hold out their hands and they receive it. And so they change. So the point is that, um, you know, whether, whatever we experience along the way is, is coming uh, through a, a very deep and often unconscious process where, where what we want or what we desire or what we are averse to is being shown to us very slowly. And that, that it's guaranteed to guide us toward that experience is sort of the role of the daimon, which is a, it's a, it's like a, you could say the daimon is like an agent of providence. It's like a, it's like a shaper of, of the larger providence that's holding us to the intention karmically. So, what I get from that is what, so your intention in the first place can be. It's coming uh, from your free will always. Yeah. So right. is the diamond necessary? I mean, it, or is, it, it just is. It just like those spirit guides in an ayahuasca vision. Yeah. It's like, they're just there. Yeah. There's just these guiding forces and they're called different things in different traditions, guardian angels, mm-hmm. totem spirit, you know, there's, I think they take on so many different forms and they, there's also a way in which they happen naturally through people entering your life, through the weather, through all sorts of different things. So, but that, but the point is that it's not, it's, you know, the thing that determines whether or not the daimon has led you to a life lesson that will have been valuable for the sake of spiritual awakening that will help you further that progress or that process is still purely based on whether or not your free will receives the lesson and the feedback from your experiences, which you chose freely to begin with. Okay, so I'm kind of getting the sense that... I thought it was kind of guaranteed that at some point we'd all figure it out. Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> oh, um, no. No, it's not. But the, the, the other thing, to this is why, again, the universe is called, the material universe is said to be a naughty. It's eternal. There's no beginning and no end to it. So when we're here, it is as though we've been here forever. Just like when you're dreaming, it's as though you've been in the dream world forever. And when you're awake, it's as though you've been awake forever. So that, that it's like a timeless space. It's really hard to understand. So that's why it's like when you're in the timelessness of, of the material um, world, there is no, yeah, there's just like you, could, you can go on dreaming as long as you want. As soon as you've been here, you've actually been here forever too. So the, it, it, that's the, the way that these spiritual realms operate. So then, the, you know, one, one of the things that you can, uh, you can say to yourself is not so much, I'll never get it right as much as there's um, an infinite amount of time, patience, compassion, and charity, because every single experience that I choose will try to give me the feedback that I need, as long as I just use my free will to open my hands to it. So that every experience that I choose will try to give me the feedback that I need. Yeah. That feels like the diamond. Um, that's not the daimon, that's providence. <laughs> the providence is, is, is actually God's, God, you know, as the divine source in all things, guiding all things back to God with not, but offering, you know, it's grace, it's mercy, it's, it's blessing. But um, the daimon is a, a thought of as like a tertiary being, essentially, like a, it's like an intermediary, it's like an angel that, that's helping, um, the soul in the earthly plane, right? So here on earth, it's like, that's a, that's a divine intelligence that's being like guided on the, the more, um, you know, environmental level of our particular lives, very personal, you know, that's why they call them spirit guides. What's yours? Mine's a fox, you know, it's, it's super personal. And that's, like, it's an instrument of God's larger providence, you could say. 
Yeah, it's, so it's it's like God's little helper. I, I think that's a good thing to like pay attention to. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> totally. You should pay attention to it. Yeah, it's a great thing to look at in charts, the position of the sun, the lot of spirit. There's lots of techniques that can be used to try and help you identify, I guess you could say, to go back to one of the questions that you had when we were talking before we actually pressed record, um, which was, you know, is it useful to try and figure out where the diamond is in the chart? Because then the diamond could kind of help you along um, your path. The, the problem is, is that um, if you're asking that from the position of, of someone who is uh, already trying to awaken spiritually or not, right? Because again, like a person who doesn't have the diamonds going to help lead you toward the outcome. You know, the outcome could be very Shakespearean, tragic death of a narcissist. You know, what, you know what I mean? And in, in which case, like finding the diamond in your chart, like some people might hear that and they might go like, oh yeah, so that's going to help me like become awesomer or something like that. And, and that's the problem is that if people think about it that way, if they're not thinking about like, where do I find that spirit guide that can help me evolve and grow spiritually? If they're, if they're not thinking about it that way, then it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it makes me think of, there is a bit in the Souls Code by uh, James Hillman where he talks about Hitler and Hitler's diamond. And yeah. it's terrifying. It's like terrifying. It's yeah, like, exactly. Um, it's like so the, he yeah, had a diamond. It, precisely. And this is why, and I, and I know some people are hearing this and they're probably going like, man, you know, you just love to bite on the stick. But, <laughs> it, you know, seriously though, like this is why the 12th house was called Malas Daemon, bad spirit. And the, the 11th house, the joy of Jupiter, the 12th was the joy of Saturn. The joy of Jupiter was called good spirit. So there is a, and my point is that it, it really is a matter, the daimon is a neutral being. It's very, in, in a sense, it's very, um, they're not necessarily, um, just like a spirit guide can be a trickster. A, mm. you know, they're, so it's, it's important not to get attached to the daimons as though they are all benevolent and that everyone's just being guided up a, a, like a, a glass elevator to heaven um, because that's not quite uh, how they work. Um, but you can, again, that's why I go back to this idea that if there's a spiritual practice in your life that's regular and you learn a bit more about the presence of the daimon in your birth chart, yes, I do think you'll, you may start to notice that you can find spiritual, let's say, allies or helping hands along the path by studying the presence of the, of the daimon. But they're not like unanimous. It's not like a, your consciousness really matters first. Yeah, that is really important. and. Um... I think it is Greenbaum who says something like the 12th house diamond is um, they're more like general bad spirits, but the 11th house diamond is like your personal diamond, which is kind of problematic for me because it's true that somebody could have a personal diamond who, which is like, let's take over the world basically and not do very nice things to people. Um, yeah. that's Yeah. I, I would disagree a little bit with that because, I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. I, maybe I've not read the same source that she's read somewhere that says that the 11th house is a more personal version of it. I think that that probably comes from this, you know, like the, my, one of my favorite books, The Soul's Code by James Hillman, where he talks a lot about the diamond and the soul guide. And my sense is that there is an attempt to look for something like that in our birth chart, which is basically the equivalent in some ways. I'm trying to be a jerk, but it's like, you know, join this, cheesy new age drum circle and tonight you'll find your spirit guide guaranteed for 25 bucks you know it's i just feel like the 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 you can locate there's i, I think it's really helpful to dive into what diamond is where diamond is how you know how that might be an an ally in your chart like that's to me that's totally worthy but i don't think like even in ayahuasca ceremonies for example um the number of spiritual entities that come as helpers in a person's life at different times, at different seasons for different reasons and purposes are many. So I also, I think that we have to be careful because there's this tendency to want to mythologize like, you know, me and ET making our way through the minefields of life. He's my spirit friend or something like that. And I, I think that, you know, that there may be something like that, but I think oftentimes there are, there, there's, plural a plurality and i think that they can come and go depending on what we're doing and, and the quality of our consciousness yeah i just i can't help but think it's very useful for people who need um 
like myself. I think it's helpful for me to think that there is something that is very close to me, actually between me and God, because sometimes God feels too big and far away. Yeah, sure. Well, in the, in the yogic tradition, we would call that the paramatma, which right. would be like the plenary portion of God that lives in the heart as the super soul. It's described in some of the Vedic shastras as that, that the, in, the, in the heart that there are two birds sitting on a branch and the one bird is the soul and the other bird is the super soul, which is like a little spark of Godhead of the, of the kind of source. And it, it's there in the heart guiding you. And we kind of experience that as the voice of say our conscience. But to me, like, I don't see any, um, I don't think the daimon was used quite like that. That's my point. But um, I do believe that again, because of the Christianization of the West, you know, that, that there is that sense of like the little spark of God that lives in the heart and guides everything and is trying to bring us home. To, to me, that has, you know, you can place that concept alongside of the daimon and have something totally compatible. I'm just, I think that the, the daimon is a slightly more ambivalent character in Greco-Roman thinking. Yeah, it's making me think of like, Greenbaum does describe this conversation, like a, a write, writing between Porphyry and Iamblichus, and I'm really identifying with Porphyry right now, being like, I think we need to find the daimon, it's really important, and Iamblichus is like, no, you just basically need to pray to God, basically. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, I mean, some conversations repeat over and over and over <laughs> again, yeah, but I think both are important. I, I actually, I, I, don't, I don't, I wouldn't actually think that our positions are that polarized, because I think that, you know, I know that you've done some work with people in their birth charts with daimon, and I think it's yeah, it's really important. And the other thing to remember is that certain techniques, certain concepts um, can become like a, a, like a medicine, you know, like, like a, some herbalists specialize in certain kinds of medicines, some, some shamans specialize in certain kinds of plants. And I think some astrologers specialize in certain kinds of techniques. And it could be that like, you know, there are, for example, you might be someone who, I mean, you or anyone listening could be someone for whom the study of this topic takes on a whole life of its own spiritually for you. And you have to really listen to that because that might be your, your daimon. That's my daimon. <laughs> your, yeah. Your paramatma, your, I mean, that, that could be guiding you into, so into something very specific. I think my, my pushback is basically um, to remember the basic thing that I would say is just to remember that even in the paradigm that, you know, that Dorian lays out in her book and that was, was present in the ancient world, that the, that the, the daimon is a servant of God's providence. So um, there there's, and that we still have to actively make a choice to receive the, the lessons that the daimon is helping us to experience. Yeah, I can definitely get behind that. So yeah. Thank you. Yeah. This is a great, this is a really fun conversation. So for people who want a few books, let's list a few and maybe we can pop them up on the screen in some images. Um, so The Soul's Code by yeah. James Hillman, great book on the daimon and the, um, some of the ancient philosophy and modern, maybe modern depth psychology surrounding the daimon. It's my, easily one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, Dorian the, Greenbaum. Yeah, something like the daimon and I want to say Greek and it's Hellenistic. I think yeah. it's the Daimon and Hel Hellenistic astrology. astrology. Okay, yeah. She has some talks out on the Daimon on YouTube, which you can also find if you search Dorian Greenbaum Daimon YouTube, that also explain some of these concepts we've been talking about. So I think those would probably be the best. Am I missing anything? Yeah, um, there is a great episode of the Astrology Podcast when Chris and Lisa are talking about the Master of the Nativity, mm -hmm. and that's an interesting. Again, that's when you'll hear about Porphyry and all of the kind of discussion that was actually going on at the time. Yeah. 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 Um, the um, astrologypodcast.com. Kat, you've talked a little bit about the daimon on your show too, right? Yeah. I've got an episode which is called like meet your daimon or something. And yeah. it's just kind of playing with these ideas. I just, it's a fun thing to, for me to play with. Which is what we're doing right now as well. Yeah. Cause I, I consider myself, um, you know, not like the world's expert on the topic, but yeah, this is really interesting. So um, yeah, if you guys who are listening have had experiences of your own, you know, personal guardian angels, spirit guides, like how have you experienced, if you hear us talking about the daimon, how have you experienced this presence in your life? And I uh, would love to hear your thoughts and reflections on this topic as well. 
So uh, you can find Kat at thecreativeintrovert.com. And um, yeah, we hope to uh, have more conversations like this. So feel free to email us your questions, info at nightlightastrology.com. Thanks everybody. And thanks, Kat.